Usually, when we talk about Linux distribution on this channel, whether we are reviewing the latest gaming performance on Cache OS or looking at a beginner friendly distro, we are talking about a very specific recipe. We are almost always talking about the Linux kernel mixed with the GNU tools. It's the standard recipe that makes up 99% of the Linux world. But today, today we are going to look at something that throws that recipe out the window. We are taking a look at a distribution called Chimera Linux. Now, I want to be clear right from the start. This is a system that breaks the rules. It's unique, it's technical, and I find it fascinating. If you are a beginner, this might sound intimidating, but stick with me. By the end of this video, you are going to understand exactly what makes this OS different. Before we dive into the deep end, I have a quick favor to ask. We are pushing hard to grow the community this year, so if you enjoy these deep dives into Linux and open source software, please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. It really helps YouTube recommend these videos to more people, and it ensures you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thank you so much, and let's get into Chimera. First, let's look at where this project comes from. Chimera isn't a brand new project that just popped up yesterday. It's actually launched back in mid-2021. It hit its alpha stage in mid-2023, and now, as we look at it in 2026, it is officially still in beta. However, don't let the beta label fool you. I have high hopes that 2026 is the year it finally delivers a stable release. Like some of the other modern distros we discussed, Chimera is an original Ronin release distribution. For those of you who are new to Linux, Ronin release means you install it once and you update it forever. You don't have to reinstall the whole operating system every 6 months like you do with some other distros. You just keep rolling updates in. But here is the twist. While Chimera uses the Linux kernel, which means it has great hardware support, it isn't really a GNU Linux distribution. Ok, let's break this down because this is the most important part of today's video. When we say Linux, we are usually using a shorthand term for GNU slash Linux. Think of an operating system like a sandwich. The bottom bun is the kernel. This talks to your hardware. The filling is the user land, GNU. These are the basic tools that let you actually use the computer, copying files, moving folders, the shell you type commands into. Almost every distro, Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu and so on, uses the GNU filling. They use the GNU C library, GNU core utils and the GNU compiler collection. Chimera Linux explicitly departs from this model. It keeps the Linux kernel, the bottom bun, but it replaces the GNU filling. Instead, it uses a userland derivative from the BSD operating system, like FreeBSD, and tools based on LLVM. Why would they do this? Is it just to be different? No, it's a design philosophy. Standard GNU tools are great, but they are very old and can be quite heavy. Chimera aims to build a cleaner, more modern system. It wants the logic and structure of a BSD system, but with the hardware compatibility of the Linux kernel. It is trying to get the best of both worlds. Let's get a little technical, but I promise to keep it simple. The heart of a Linux system's user land is the C library. Standard distros use it. It's the industry standard, but it's huge. Chimera uses muscle. Think of GNU C library like a giant Swiss army knife that has 500 tools on it. It can do everything, but it's heavy to carry around. Muscle, on the other hand, is like a surgical scalpel. It is lightweight, strict, and incredibly fast. Because Chimera is built on muscle, the whole system has less overhead. It uses less RAM just to exist. Furthermore, Chimera doesn't use the standard GNU compiler. It uses LLVM slash Clang and its primary system compiler. It also uses non-GNU versions of standard utilities wherever possible. This is a huge deal for developers. LLVM is a newer, more modular compiler infrastructure. By building the whole operating system with these modern tools, Chimera ensures the code is cleaner and easier to maintain. It also means the licensing is different. The BSD and LLVM license are more permissive than the GNU license. For the average user, this might not matter much, but for people who care about open source politics and freedom definitions, this is a significant distinction. Now, if you have been in the Linux community for a while, you know that nothing starts an argument faster than mentioning systemd. Systemd is the software that starts up your computer. It manages your services, your logs, your network, and more. Most major distros use it because it's convenient. But many Unix purists hate it because it does too much. It's complex. You guessed it. Chimera Linux is a systemd-free distribution. Instead, it uses a init system called dinit. Dinit is designed with that old-school Unix philosophy. Do one thing and do it well. Its only job is to manage your service and start the computer. It doesn't want to control the world. Because it is so focused, it is incredibly fast and reliable. 
When you boot up Chimera, you aren't waiting for a dozen different subsystems to load. It just works. This is actually similar to what Void Linux does. You guys have probably heard of Void. It's often described as a Unix-oriented Linux because it also rejects the complexity of modern Linux trends. Well, Chimera takes that same mindset and pushes it even further. Ok, so you have this super clean non-GNU system, how do you actually install programs? Do you have to compile everything from scratch? Thankfully, no. Chimera uses a package manager called APK. APK stands for Alpine Package Keeper. If you ever heard of Alpine Linux, which is used a lot in servers and containers, you know APK. APK is famous for one thing, speed. When you type a command to install a software, it happens almost instantly. It is known for its simplicity and minimal overhead. In Chimera, the installation process follows the common Linux approach. You open the terminal, you type apk add firefox or whatever app you need and it installs. Is it worth nothing that Chimera does not use atomic updates? We've talked about atomic updates with other systems, where the updates happen in the background and you reboot into the new version. Chimera is traditional. You update packages individually. This gives you, the user, more control. You decide exactly what changes on your system and when. Now, I have to give you a warning. I call this channel no friendly, but Chimera Linux, well, the installation process is not for the faint of heart. The installation is done entirely from the terminal. There is no next next finish button here. It is very similar to installing Arch Linux. You will need to partition your disk manually, mount your file system, install the base system via command line, configure your user accounts and bootloader manually. This sounds scary, I know. But honestly, it is one of the best ways to learn how Linux actually works. When you build your system from the ground up like this, you understand it. You know exactly what is running because you put it there. Chimera gives you the freedom to build the system entirely around your own preferences. It doesn't force a desktop environment on you. You want GNOME? Install it. You want KDE? Install it. You want a tiling window manager? It's your choice. It is exceptionally lightweight, fast and flexible. So why are we talking about this now? Because in 2026 Linux is becoming more popular, but also more bloated. A lot of distros are adding layers and layers of complexity. Chimera is refreshing because it goes back to basics, but with modern technology. It uses muscle, library and LLVM compilers to create a system that is arguably more advanced than the standard GNU slash Linux distros, but significantly lighter. If you are an advanced technical user, or if you are someone who used to use Arch or Void and you are looking for something new, something that challenges the status quo, this is it. I genuinely hope that 2036 is the year Chimera lives beta. It has the potential to be the ultimate power user distribution. So, the final verdict, should you install Chimera Linux today? If you are new to Linux, if you just switched from Windows last week, I will say wait. Stick with something based on Debian or Fedora for now. The learning curve here is steep. But if you are drawn to Unix philosophy, the idea that a computer system should be simple, modular and understandable, Chimera is a must try. If you like the idea of BSD but you need the hardware support of the Linux kernel, this is literally the perfect operating system for you. It's fast, it's clean and it's arguably one of the most interesting projects in the open source world right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Does the idea of non-GNU Linux sound exciting to you or does it sound like a compatibility nightmare? And for my veteran Linux users out there, have you tried muscle-based distros before? Did you notice the speed difference? Drop a comment below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of Chimera Linux, remember to like, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.